Hey there, welcome again. I got Ben here with me. Uh, it's Bry Guy here. Yeah, um, anyways, I can give you a little bit of a background on me. I'm the art director at Massive Damage. I'm working in the game industry for the last 10 years. Um, I have a decent familiarity with 3D, 2D workflows, things like that. Uh, and I have some thoughts about the Steam Deck that's coming out. So I got Ben here with me. Uh, just help me balance off some thoughts and whatnot so that I can uh, articulate a little bit better. But um, so anyways, the Steam Deck um had its first embargo lift which let developer let specifically like three or four people i only saw three or four people that had access to them but they only had five games they, they could play with so the five games they could play with were devil may cry um five control um sorry uh dead cells for some reason but i think that was added as a sixth game so um the other the other big ones were let's see Control, Devil May Cry, oh, Ghost Runner, and Forza. So what I wanted to talk about this is kind of my initial predictions of the, the Steam Deck is I think that it's going to be a really powerful handheld and it's going to outperform people's expectations under very specific conditions. And that's why I'm skeptical of the five games they've showed. Be oh, Street Fighter V was the other one, but none of them reviewed Street Fighter V despite the fact that Neither Gamers Nexus or Linus Tech Tips looked at Street Fighter V despite it being one of the games listed. And I think that's partially because it won't have any problems hitting 60 frames per second at the Steam Deck's resolution. But it it's, for me, the big issue with all of this is that what's going to make a Steam Deck game perform or not perform is one of two things as far as I'm concerned. If it's the engine that the game's in and the API that it's using. In, in some ways, um, you know Sony's recent release of God of War on PC? Yeah. It was DirectX 11 only. And it takes it, it's kind of funny because their entire, um, even in Digital Foundry's video, they talked about how um, the developer had to completely rework all the particle system because it was built on using asynchronous compute on the PS4. Um, and they don't have any of that. So they had to brute force it and do it in other ways on the PS on the PC to get the same kind of particle effects. But it actually is very interesting. By using DirectX 11, it runs way worse on AMD hardware than NVIDIA hardware. And it's kind of a strange thing because the game was built to so beautifully use AMD hardware with the PS4 version. And the PC version, while being a, a good port, I guess, and being praised because it does run fairly well on NVIDIA hardware, it, it definitely isn't using hardware to the cutting edge the way that it does on console because it's not using asynchronous compute. It's not using some things and it really doesn't represent what Radeon hardware is capable of. That's my big beef with it. And the reason that I'm bringing this up is because the Steam Deck is based on RDNA 2. And the things that are gonna make RDNA 2 perform um, on the Steam Deck and run really, really well, um, RDNA 2, for those who don't know, is AMD's uh, latest graphic architecture. It's in the same thing that's in the PS5, the Series X, and in the uh, the Radeon 6000 series of GPUs. And it's really freaking amazing when it comes to um, TMUs and ROPs. So basically doing uh, tricks with textures and, and rasterizing your screen, turning everything into pixels. It's probably faster than any GeForce on the market. Not, not the Steam Deck, but the architecture, the RDNA 2 architecture is faster at that than um, even the 3090. And the 3090 is faster at shader operations, which is why you get them flip-flopping from game to game. The 3090 is much better when it comes to ray tracing currently, but all of these things come into play when we're talking about the Steam Deck. So the big things that I think we're going to see is um, obviously it uses Linux and it uses a Proton layer to translate code from DirectX um, either 11 or 12 to Vulkan on the fly. And that's how it operates. So, but DirectX 11 is terrible in some ways, but it's very good to develop for. It's a really solid development environment. And you end up kind of with less buggy issues to solve, but you lose a lot of potential performance. Um, because, sorry? I was gonna say, so it's more stable, just it doesn't have like extremes. Well, yeah. So what happens with APIs, um, application oh, program interface, um, with graphics APIs specifically, is um, if you expose too much of the render pipeline to your developers, there is massive potential for huge gains. 
but there is also as much potential to ruin your own frame rate. So that's kind of one of the the things that's at risk. So with DirectX 12, what ended up happening is even though it's got literally a 20 times performance increase when it comes to draw calls, and but that's just one aspect. So draw calls is the call that tells your, your CPU is telling your GPU to draw an object on the screen, anything, a 3D model, a mesh, whatever. Um, when it's calling that, it uses one draw call to do that. Um, some There's ways to batch draw calls to make it more optimal or get more draw calls off of that and oftentimes in the optimization phase of game development for PC, for DirectX 11, the developers are actually batching draw calls is a big thing that they do to optimize games. They're trying to find similar kinds of calls, group them together and get uh, the performance up by reducing the amount of draw calls. But even though you have massive performance wins in like two or three places and you get access to asynchronous compute and things like that, although asynchronous compute is only a win on Radeon I think the GeForce 3000 series has reasonable support for asynchronous compute, but its pipeline still seems to be one solid line. So asynchronous compute just allows them, if they get data in, they can take a piece of data and they can be like, hey, I'm gonna process this later. And then they put it on the side until part of the pipeline where your shaders aren't being used. So let's say it's uh, it's on your TMUs and it's the GPU is currently in the phase where it's um, putting textures on all of the polygons. Right, or when it's in the shadow map and it's it's using your your um, TMUs or your ROPs to draw shadows and everything. Your shaders are 100% free for cloth physics, for uh, particle effects, for anything that they want to asynchronously compute. But they the for the longest time, like the GeForce 10 series doesn't have this. I don't know if the 20 series has it. Nvidia just had no proper support for it. They say they support it and they supported the code for it, but there's no performance advantage for running it. It kind of just like will take that code path, but you don't get a performance advantage, but Radeon gets a huge performance advantage. And that's something that certain games are gonna lack. So God of War on PC isn't gonna show the Steam Deck's potential. And that's what that rant was about because it's using the DirectX 11 API. It's not going to favor Radeon. Um, actually, I'll pull up something really quick. I'll pull this on the other screen. If you have any questions about that rant, to bide me some time. No, <laughs> not really. No. Okay. So anyways, it was quite the rant. So if I look at, uh, where is it? Tech GPU. So you're going to throw this on screen. You're not going to be able to see it, but I'll talk. It gives me something to talk about. So if you look at typically what I, I did like to do is look for engine fairness and how it represents hardware. And when you see specifically with God of War, if you up the resolution, and turn off FSR. So you see the 6900 XT is being beaten by about 5% from the 3080 Ti and down the stack. But the funnier thing is even if, let's go to 1440p and look at the equivalent cards. So you're not even getting 60 frames per second with like a Vega 64 or a Vega 56. And this is all because of DirectX 11. I guarantee you, if all of the particle effects and all of that were being loaded asynchronously, you would have these cards doing much better. I would assume up about five or 10%. And these Radeon cards would jump up as well. So this is, it's not representative of hardware. This is an API stall that's causing these issues. So we're not gonna get the same performance on the Steam Deck with this game because of the API. And this is what we have to factor. So anyways, the games that they allowed to show at um, running on the Steam Deck for this, we'll, we'll watch the video now are, um, I think they're critical because of the engine talk that we're do what I'm doing right now. Because the way that I figure this is the games that are gonna run the best on the Steam Deck are gonna be either DirectX 12 or Vulkan, primarily Vulkan games. And the other ones that will run well will have um, a fair engine. Like uh, I'd say Reach for, Reach for the Moon, RE engine, um, is probably the best case scenario. I'd say probably Decima would be fine. Almost any engine that's built console first, I would argue is surprisingly fairer on the hardware on PC. Any engine that's built PC first, like Unity or Unreal, is I would say probably more biased towards making NVIDIA look better than the hardware actually is. And that's... It, it normally isn't a big deal because 70 to 80% of all PC gamers play on NVIDIA cards, but the Steam Deck is an interesting case because it's probably the best handheld PC that's ever existed. 
and it's all Radeon hardware. So what, what gamers are going to face, hardcore PC gamers, is they might complain about frame rates in games, but it's not Radeon's fault at all. It's If it's a DirectX 11 game, you're going to lose 10 to 30% of your performance just because that API doesn't take advantage of Radeon features like asynchronous compute and other things. So games like God of War will run 30% slower on the Steam Deck than it's theoretically capable of just because the, the developers only targeted the DirectX 11 API. And the, um, anyways, the the APIs are a big factor and then the, the engines are a big factor. So why I pointed this out is I think my, my personal opinion is Unreal Engine 4 is very biased against Radeon. That's my opinion. Um, I don't know whether Unreal Engine 5 will have that issue, but Unreal 4 is very biased against Radeon. So, and it's interesting to me that the only Unreal 4 game that's in the games they're allowed to show for the pre-release window are is Street Fighter 5. And it's ancient now, and it will have no problems hitting 60 frames per second. But most of the modern... Um, most of the modern Unreal 4 games are the ones I'm most worried about running well on the Steam Deck. The games I'm not worried about are like, I'm honestly, I'm sure Death Stranding and Horizon Zero Dawn were going to run great on this because they support modern APIs and they have a, a fair engine. I am positive you'll be able to play Resident Evil 2 Remake, 3 Remake, Remake, 7 and 8, no problem on the Steam Deck and Devil May Cry 5 because the RE engine is a fair engine and it supports modern APIs. I am worried about any Unreal game and Unity game. Those are the two that I'm worried about. And I think it's interesting that really none of them were given in this specific instance. Mm -hmm. um, so having ranted all of that, we can go into the performance of these two videos. Up with here. And the community for this thing, do not kid yourself, is gonna be enormous. Like I've seen haters out there that are like, this thing is not gonna take off. You are wrong. And now that I can show you these performance numbers, you are going to see just how wrong you Control were. is also running it's on, important to keep in mind I would argue, a fair engine because they the made their own for engine. Our preview embargo today, but I also haven't seen anything to make me believe that their goal was to mislead us about the deck's capabilities. So kicking things off, Control is a DirectX game with no native Linux port, but a platinum rating on ProtonDB, meaning that it should run perfectly on Linux out of the box. Trying to think what APIs and that's it supports. Exactly I know it what supports at least DirectX 12. More than perfect, I'd say, given that the Steam Deck... So here we're getting roughly, I don't know, in auto settings, we're getting somewhere close to 60 with lows that drop to 45. So that's extremely playable. Um, yeah. And that's like, that's really good frame rates for the resolution. I mean, we have a hard time getting 60 frames per second on PS4. My PS4 doesn't get anywhere near it. It's locked at 30 and you know, PS5 and series X even have issues, especially when you put rate you, well, you can play it perfectly at 60 or you can play it at 30 with ray tracing. So thirty or unlocked? I thought it was uh, with no. Tracing. It's it's unlocked when you go into the the camera view, the uh, pick photo mode, and that's what they yes, used to yes. benchmark it. Uh, like Digital Foundry did that. So, anyways, this this here is a game. Yes, it's a high end game, right? It looks nice, um, but it's a fair engine. It's their own in house engine, and uh, Remedy. Say, I'm pretty sure it's Remedy. Um, yep, it's a fair in house engine. And they're really great tech masters and it's using a modern API. So this is a best case scenario for the Steam Deck. We're going to be able to get games that actually feature wise are closer to Xbox, 36, Xbox, sorry, Xbox Series X and PS5 than the PS4 or the Xbox One because of uh, the API being set properly and the, um, yeah, the engine. So ran away all of the these crown here. Another worth mentioning side note is that on a screen this size, even at the low preset, control looks absolutely amazing. What a time to be alive, right? I know. Continuing it's pretty on, crazy to play games like that in bed. So also, this is the RE engine, which is probably one of my favorite engines of the last few years, and incredibly fair on hardware. This engine. So I would argue. I think that it it's even. You know, it's going to make both Radeon and NVIDIA look good, this hardware. And that's what I mean by a fair engine. It shouldn't bias one way or the other. It should make the hardware show what the hardware is capable of. And this, again, I, I'm pretty sure it supports DirectX 12. I don't think it supports Vulkan. 
but DirectX 12 and a good engine. So now we're getting like 86 frames per second. We put the settings to high and you still get 84 frames per second with a low of 64. So this is gonna be amazing to play on the Steam Deck, right? But these aren't the worst case scenarios and these are not the games that I'm worried about at all. The games that I'm worried about are once again related to having bad API plus bad engine. So it's like, bigger when you're gonna play this and it's gonna run great and look good, but you'll play PUBG on this. And because it's an Unreal 4 game, and because it's, I think it's DirectX 11 as well, it's gonna run like hot filth, right? Despite it looking worse than Devil May Cry 5 and Control. Anyways. And for the Steam Deck, which basically never dipped under 70 FPS on medium settings with anti aliasing I'm actually pretty enabled. excited to see okay, Resident Evil, basic anti -aliasing, by, uh, Resident Evil uh, 2 remake and, and Devil May Cry on the Steam Deck. Ghost Runner continues What's Valve's the screen dominance, resolution the again? Uh, it's 1280 by 800. So it's uh, 16 by 10, not 16 by 9 of 720p. Uh, so it's slightly taller, the screen. Okay. Clear win um, in DirectX 11. And Ghost Runner, a new so DirectX 12. I'm curious the frame rate difference. So it shows us here. DirectX 11, you're getting an 81.2 frame rate, right? So you lose out on, once again, specific Radeon hardware features. You lose out on half floats. You lose out on um, asynchronous compute. Very specific Radeon features have zero support. So we got 81 FPS down up to 89 with DirectX 12. So what is it? It's almost a 10% frame rate increase, right? Just by changing APIs, right? And I, I don't know when the minimum went up good too. I'm curious what Ghost Runner's engine is. I'll have to look at Ghost Runner's engine. Because if it is an Unreal 4 engine, Ghost Runner, Ghost Runner, Game GPU. Let me take a look. Uh, it almost always shows the. Why is this taking so long to load? Okay, let's see. Ghost Runner. So it is an Unreal Engine game. Okay. <laughs> Look at the G4. Oh, you can't see it. Nope. But when you the the, I mean they only have the 5700 XT here, but yeah. It seems to be slightly underperforming, but actually not too bad in this specific game. I wonder if they did custom optimizations for it. Because you can, there's, when you use Unreal 4, in, like Unreal Engine 4, there's proprietary uh, NVIDIA things you can just kind of pull in, but you don't have to use them. And you can also do your own optimizations, it's just most game developers don't. Creating a new standard for mobile gaming performance in DirectX 12. I mean, the DEX lows here managed to nearly outstrip the average frame rates of competing devices powered by Intel XE graphics and AMD's last gen Vega architecture mm. GPUs. But it also isn't a completely one sided fight here. Dead Cells is the first of all. See, this is an interesting one because this seems to me like it's an issue of one of two things. Cause you can see the Steam Deck performs worse here than in any of the other ones, right? But it's not performing, it, it's like over 150 frames per second, right? So it's, yeah. it's not like it's bad performance. So there's one of two things. I think these ones are all eight cores and the Steam Deck is four cores. So we're either thread limited or we're proton limited. So these ones are all running Windows, right? And there's no translation layer. And there may be a native, like, let's say it's a, a, a peak performance you can get because the translation layer is going to be the bottleneck at specific high frame rates. So there's a chance that if you run this in the Windows version of the Steam Deck, it won't have this issue. And the other thing that you could end up having is the um, Steam might have put into their 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 Linux distro, whatever it is, uh, a cap on um max frame rate or something to make sure that it, the battery just doesn't drain for no reason so there's one of three reasons why that's happening i don't think it's a hardware wise if it is hardware wise it's related to for some reason dead cells needs more cores than you would imagine but i don't imagine that being the case i, I think it's much more likely that it's a uh, either um an issue uh, either an intentional thing to produce reduce power or it's an issue with proton hitting super high frame rates there might be a, a limit to what it can do just because it will go as fast as it can but then you're always being left behind by the translation layer uh, or 
Sorry. Do we know what the Steam Deck's uh, screen, like it's like Hertz output? 60. Okay. I was surprised. I was kind of hoping Valve would have done the first um, variable refresh screen. <laughs> That's what I would have hoped because I was always, I was hoping the Switch would have done it too because you wouldn't have cared about as much of the frame dips if they had done a variable refresh on it, but they never have. And I'm like, hmm, I don't imagine it would kill your battery anymore or have any other issues but maybe maybe there's a reason why people avoid it with portables why did valve want us to look at this games on the surface it actually seems like the steam deck puts up an embarrassing fight here coming in dead last but we also observed that even though we unlocked the frame rate soc power consumption was quite low in this game hmm. we've got a couple of theories about this maybe around optimization or valve doing something in the background to save power rather than push past 150 fps but we're not sure at this time and we have no reassuring explanation for this next one massive credit to valve so first and foremost, forza 5 for forza horizon it's kind 5. of Interesting because it's showing a game that scales all, really well. But while the in-game benchmark reports, so this one just seems to have more tech here, issues the than it has does hardware issues. Hold up. Both Jake and I experienced. So this I is like a Proton Windows layer. I guarantee if you just play this in the Windows mode, like if you install Windows on the Steam Deck, this won't be a problem. Smooth, true to the frame rate report, but the experience of playing the game is uneven I'm curious and jarring. Why? Because they talk about me. rubber banding here, where the game will suddenly slow down and then speed up to catch up, right? And I'm I'm curious because they're doing it through the obviously the Proton layer. It, why it would do that? Because that seems like some kind of C CPU desynchronization issue. But I don't know. Uh, I'd have to look into when it. When a video call gets buffered and then the speaker's voice goes slow and then goes fast to catch up and then slow and yeah. fast to catch up. But so anyways, the this is source community the primary jump. thing I wanted to talk about with this video and with the next video. Just talk about the performance with both of these cards. Um, so adapter, power consumption seems power pretty good. The AC adapter the, could deliver. But I think this as mentioned is earlier loading the system while it? simultaneously charging the battery okay. reached. So going to the benchmarks on here. The DX11 without a DX12 option, meaning no ray tracing features were available at all. Running on wall power, the medium preset was the highest we could go without. They don't really compare it to other hardware. They just have the frame rates of the specific games. Their numbers seem. No, that the bottom one there is pretty comparable. It's not the best experience for a fast-paced game, and that's even without. means it's just plugged into a. Yeah, they did power charge. Well, they did comparisons before without the docked and the, the firmware was exactly the same. So this isn't a comparison of docked versus undocked. This is a comparison of ray tracing versus no ray tracing primarily, but it's, they should have probably marked it in a way that was clearer or just run them both undocked or whatnot so that people wouldn't misread these slides. Um, but this is ray tracing. So it's pretty cool that you're getting over 30 frames per second with ray tracing on in ghost runner at native resolution which is promising for certain games, especially low tier ray tracing games like Resident Evil 8, right? That have some ray tracing features, but it's not going to break the bank. Um, yeah. Like, it would be interesting to see how Me Metro Exodus um, full global illumination ray tracing runs on it. But because uh, it does have ray tracing hardware, but it's pretty paltry that amount of max out ray tracing RT on cores and maintaining on. a frame rate that's technically playable. Running on battery had no other test results. We were confident enough to try Forza Horizon 5 with the high preset, but it wasn't up to par. 39 FPS average with a yeah. 25 FPS 0.1% low might be. What I'm well really curious of is you're probably going to lose about somewhere between 5 and 15% of your performance with this Proton layer converting. DirectX to Vulkan on the fly. Um, so I'm curious to see what happens when we do more, um, when people put Windows on it as well, mm. just to see how Windows runs it. Because if they have really good Windows support, my, I mean, the hope would be that you wouldn't need to, because obviously Windows licenses can be expensive. And then also having dual operating systems is going to use up a lot of the internal storage of these devices. And it would be better to keep more of the storage for games. But anyways, so my kind of thoughts on this is like, well, Devil May Cry 5 here, but where's the FPS on Devil May Cry? Do they show it? No, they probably talk about it. 
But anyways, these are kind of the things that I wanted to go into with the Steam Deck. I'm very curious with the hardware. I think that it has a lot of potential. From like a, a tech standpoint, you're getting something roughly equivalent to, I would say even probably 30, 20 to 30% technically faster than a PS4 base in a handheld, which is nuts. Although I don't think it will, I think it will perform better than a PS4 with games that are in DirectX 12 or Vulkan already and uh, using a fair engine like RE Engine or something like that. And it will underperform the PS4 in Unreal 4 or Unity games using DirectX 11. That's my guess with the Steam Deck. How much do you think uh, Sony and Nintendo are going to be paying attention to the Steam Deck? Well, I think that Sony doesn't have to worry about it because they haven't done anything in the handheld space for a while. Um, and it's not really going to fill up your TV, right? It's like, this is talking about running the game at 1280 by 800. We blow it up to 4K, you're going to want a PS5, right? It's not, it's not the end of the world for them. It's more of the end of the world. It's a bigger deal for Nintendo because they're... But it kind of really isn't either because Nintendo has always kind of operated as his own entity. And gamers pick up Nintendo for Nintendo stuff. So they operate kind of as an island separate from everything else. Like Sony, PC, and PS, PlayStation are always more likely to cannibalize each other, right? Whereas most people will get Nintendo plus one of the other ones. Does that... Oh, I'm more of a saying like along the lines of like, not them being direct competition, but more as say Nintendo using the Steam Deck as an external R&D for them to see how certain things work so that way they don't have to do it themselves to see the outcome. Were you talking about them like looking at how they did the hardware and stuff to potentially do a Switch 2 or something like that? Or Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, I kind of... Nintendo's kind of tied into NVIDIA would be my guess. First of all, because I guarantee NVIDIA would have forced it that way. They built a custom, NVIDIA built a custom low level API for Nintendo to use for the Switch. So, for compatibility's sake, they might be stuck in that ecosystem for the Switch 2 if they want to maintain Switch compatibility, which they most likely want to do. Although, everyone who's partnered with NVIDIA for one generation before has regretted it massively. Like, Microsoft with the original Xbox. 360? No, the 360 was not that. The 360 was, uh, it was uh, PowerPC by IBM and ATI at the time before ATI was bought by, uh, bought by right, AMD. Right. Um, but it was actually the, the original Xbox, what, it had an NVIDIA, it was like a GeForce 3 equivalent, roughly. It was better in some ways, worse in other ways. And it was a custom GeForce 3, but NVIDIA wouldn't lower the price through the generation, but Xbox had to lower the price of the console to compete. So they were taking larger and larger losses on the hardware through the hardware life cycle, and they hated their relationship with NVIDIA through it, and then they didn't want to work with them again. Sony worked with NVIDIA for the PS3, which had, oddly enough, a weaker GPU than the Xbox 360. It had a, a, a crazy but more powerful CPU, but it... They also lamented their relationship with NVIDIA afterwards. So because it pushed the prices too high and they couldn't get NVIDIA to lower the prices because most people who are working with NVIDIA don't enjoy it afterwards. So I'm curious whether NVIDIA has put Nintendo in that position, whether they were just happy to have a hardware win. So they let Nintendo slide and they were kind of using pre-existing Tegra chips that weren't being used for phones anyways. So it was kind of like already NVIDIA's dumpster bin of chips that they put into it. But making new hardware going forward might pose more of a problem with Nintendo. So if we're looking at what they might want to do with the Steam Deck, that would be the issue. Is I think Microsoft would look at this and be like, great, we don't have to make a handheld. We can just put Game Pass on this and people can play their Xbox library on on it and they're right in that regard and the hardware actually microsoft's path is the most straightforward because all microsoft games developed use directx as a base and they use the direct an alternate code path for the directx 12 api that's what they use for xbox series x games so we'd actually see really easy 
compatibility. You're going to see pretty decent performance on any fair engine game that's an Xbox game, I would say. So that's not a huge deal. And Sony, with games that are using a reasonable... Well, God of War should have been this. If God of War didn't limit itself to DirectX 11, it would have been a win on the Steam Deck. It might turn out that it's powerful enough to nail its native resolution at um, 60 FPS anyways, which is what I hope. But I'm wary of that because it's using DirectX 11. It can't use the asynchronous compute and half floats that they would get if they went through DirectX 12. So it's not going to re- it's not going to perform as well as it could have if it just had a better API support. The engine is fair with God of War, but the API isn't. Does that make sense? Yeah. And um, so Sony, I mean, they abandoned the Vita. They might not want to have to focus on handhelds, and they still sell their games. So they make the money off of their games on Steam, but they do lose twenty to thirty percent. This is going to be the interesting thing going forward is that the 20 to 30% fee that Steam charges on your game, Sony is used to getting that fee when you buy games on their consoles. So they're going to be... They're also going on Epic Store too. I'm not sure what the breakdown is there. Well, Epic Store has a lower fee and then the fee is even lower if you made your game in Unreal Engine because they they Mm -hmm. take away part of the fee that they would take away from your game anyways because Unreal's... um, their system for making games in Unreal Engine gives them a cut of your game regardless. So if you make your game in Unreal Engine, you have to pay them part of your game sales. So you're already losing a cut, but if you release your game on Epic Store, they kind of pull some of that cut and they give you a lower, they take a lower cut than Steam. So that's Epic's play and that's their play on the store. Um, I kind of think Epic had some interesting things because everyone was so angry at Epic Games until they gave everyone a game a week for two years. Yeah. Because... Well, library, everyone has their library on Steam and they didn't want to go to another store to rebuild their library. They didn't necessarily hate Epic outright. They were talking like it, but what they were really scared of is they're losing their game collection. That's what they were afraid of. So then when Epic essentially just gave them back their collection a week at a time... Then they were like, I've noticed the animosity towards Epic has been dropping literally every week that they do that. So, and as long as Fortnite keeps making a sea of money for them, they can afford to do it. Um, Which it will. Yeah. It's the smash of PC gaming. Yeah. So anyways, I mean, this is primarily my Steam Deck rant. Is there anything you want me to... I mean, I'm, I'm most obsessed with the chipset and how you see when you will know when it run, it's running at its potential. That's kind of what this video is all about. It's about me explaining when the Steam Deck will be hitting its potential and when it won't be. And what games are actually, and this is the big difference between PC and console, because I mean, the only thing that really factors in on console is that sometimes the engines aren't fair to the console. Like I always say it with Unreal Engine 4, like Ace Combat 4, sorry, Ace Combat 8, 7? Which was the last one, was it 7? Isn't it eight? I thought it was, was it eight? eight. It might be eight. Whatever. The most recent Ace Combat looks worse than Resident Evil Remake, looks worse than any RE engine game, looks worse than any Sony native engine game because it runs in Unreal 4 and it runs on like 1080p on a PS4 Pro versus like RE engine games which run at like uh, checkerboarded up to um, 4K. So one axis resolution is half of 4K and the other one is is true. And then they check a board up to it. So it's like those games both look better and they run at like, they run at really good frame rates. So it's like there are engines that do not treat hardware fairly. And this is kind of what I'm trying to get at with the Steam Deck. Now, developers almost always have the option of tuning or doing things to improve it. Like in Unreal and Unity, you can rewrite the renderer. So you can make your game fair, but 90% of game developers don't do that. There's a very small subset of games, like Genshin Impact rewrote the renderer in Unity. That's one game that I'm pretty sure did that to make it more fair across hardware, more or less, and make make it look as good as they wanted. So anyways, this this whole thing, I'm just trying to get at what's going to represent this hardware accurately. When you get, and I think that probably the best case scenarios will be like RE Engine games running in a modern API or like Doom Eternal 
which is a fair engine game on the id tech or the whatever version of id's engine and running on vulcan natively or wolfenstein the the two most recent wolfenstein games those games are going to show right out of the box without very much optimization. And they're gonna, you're gonna be like, how the heck can this handheld run this when you look at those games? But then other games like, uh, whatever, let's think of some Unreal Engine ones like PUBG or like, I'm trying to think of something else comes to my mind. They're going uh, to, they're going to underperform. That's my guess. This is my guess is that they're gonna look worse than you would expect and not run that well on the Steam Deck. But it's, it's not a hardware problem. That is a API plus engine problem. And that's one thing that I, I care more about because I'm always most interested when games are representing what hardware is capable of. That's my favorite thing. So I'm all for saying, hey, this aspect of it is weak. Like I'm a little worried about the fact that this is only a four core design and it's based on Zen 2 when Zen 3 is out and Zen 4 is around the corner, right? So this... It's interesting because uh, the two other handholds that they mention here, they show them in the Linus Tech Tips video. Uh, where is it? The One uh, X and something else. Yeah. So these ones, I'm pretty sure I'd have to look it up, but I'm, I think they're using Zen three. So they have a better CPU, but a worse GPU in a way. Um, so because they're using Vega architecture and they're not using RDNA two. So it's it's kind of interesting how they've used resources differently between these because these four are all AMD hardware essentially, right? But these these two just took it off the top of the shelf, right? They just bought got hardware off of the shelf from AMD, and then the Steam Deck had a custom uh, a a custom uh, SOC built for them. So, anyways, um, the other thing that you might be facing is more memory latency issues that would drop your frame rate on these other devices. Because on SOCs, memory latency is, can be a big issue. And I'm pretty sure the Steam Deck uses a version of DDR5, which is, uh, well, it has latency issues, but it should be much faster. So anyways, this is kind of like my fixation on, I, I thought these results were interesting. And what I, I'm the most interested in in all of this is what's actually showing this hardware's capabilities and when are we, we seeing limitations that PC imposes. Anyways, any thoughts or? Nothing more yeah. right now anyway. Gotcha. I just like blasted a bunch of information. <laughs> speculation, wild speculation. Um, anyways, I'm, I'm super excited. I do have a pre-order for the hopefully close to the release day. Um, I'm having a bunch of games that I'm going to run on it. If anyone is interested in me testing specific games, I, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be most interested in testing exactly what I'm saying. Uh, looking at Unreal Engine games, seeing, downloading several of those, seeing which ones cause issues, and then downloading several uh, more specifically, I would say, fairer engines, and then testing them out. And then, like, I would love to do a set of the RE engine, because I think those are going to sing. I think you can play Resident Evil 8 on this thing, and you'd be like, getting pretty close to PS5 settings at its native resolution. You might have to lower one or two things, but that's pretty crazy for a handheld. Um, but most other games without the proper API and engine won't look like that. So it's kind of like the best case scenario for the device. Anyways, that's me. I hope you like this video. If you have any questions or if you think that I got anything wrong terribly, please let me know and I'll catch you on the next one.